Welcome back to Zero Gravity, Apollo Media's NBA podcast brought to you by Big City Wings and Celebrity Mint. We'll talk about them a little bit later. I am joined again with our special guest, Sheldon. How are we doing, bud? Hey, doing so good. What, two, two and a half weeks of NBA basketball? My Rockets are good most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so we just beat the snot out of the Spurs. And it's always it's always a good day when you beat the snot out of the Spurs. So I'm doing good. How are you? You know, Rockets fans and Mavericks fans can't agree on a lot of things. But the one thing that they can't agree on is just beating the shit out of the Spurs. And that just makes everybody <laughs> in the room happy. That's time. right. Yeah, yeah. We can come together on this mutual hatred. It's a good day when either team in Texas beats the Spurs. It's a good time. Uh, yeah. Sheldon, well, we're yeah, like you said, two and a half weeks into the NBA season. Uh, I, it's a good thing that we're into the NBA season because my fo- both of my football teams are dead. They're dead to me. Uh, <laughs> saved their lives. It's just... It's brutal. I was I was really hyped up for uh, football season this year, and it's let me down in any way, shape, and form you can think of. I can't win. I can't get a win. We just my Mississippi State Bulldogs. They just beat UMass. Um, wasn't even happy with it. Whoa, it looked great. <laughs> like second win of the year. It's just it's a it's a rough time. But thank God basketball's here. Now my Mississippi State Bulldogs yeah. basketball's back. We're back, baby. Basketball. Yeah, back. there you go. It's in uh, basketball's back. It's saving us. It's in full force. So uh, this past week's been interesting in the NBA uh, yeah. off off the court, to say the least. We'll, we'll start with that. Uh, Joel Embiid assaults a reporter, um, allegedly. <laughs> Dude, crazy. I, I mean, so if you haven't heard this story already and you're just living under a rock and you're an NBA fan and you just don't have Twitter or news outlets, like you don't have the internet. Yeah. I, I don't know or how you listen watch games. To anything. You just have cable. I don't know. Um, Joel Embiid. Uh, there was a story written about Joel Embiid, uh, just like basically talking about him not playing back to backs and the the load management and his knee issue that apparently is a real issue from this past off season where he played in the Olympics and maybe he probably shouldn't have at this rate. <laughs> like, um, not great. But the reporter basically talked about um, his son and also Joel Embiid's late brother who died yeah. um, the year like right before he was drafted, I believe in 2014. So not good to just like bring that up out of randomness, talking about him not playing basketball because he, he can't stay healthy. He's a seven foot one giant human being with like, yeah. What paper mache as feet and knees. Like he, you can't help that. Yeah. Bill Walton had the same issues. Like it, it's just something that happens to some individuals. So you can't really call that out and then also mention his son and late brother. A rough look from the reporter, first off. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Uh, I remember seeing it and, because, you know, NBA Central or someone on Twitter is, is posting the story once it comes out and like, oh, this is going to be interesting yep. uh and obviously a lot of people were upset with it from the jump and then you know then you get the sleeper notification espn notification whatever joel and pete apparently wait, wait i guess at first it was he had an altercation a physical altercation or something like that and i'm like yep. oh he, he punched him like yep. <laughs> he hit this dude uh and honestly my knee-jerk reaction was fine like like, oh, like something carnal in me was like, good. <laughs> yeah. Because what he said was just like as out of pocket as you can like probably get without getting fired. Yes. Well, he like he might still get fired. I don't know. It, yeah. I, I like mean, that. in that yeah, context, it's, like if you're doing a profile on Joel Embiid, yes. and you have to mention his story and all the things that he's gone through and all, yada, yada, yada. You can do that all, all day long. But talking about yeah. his load management. And then bringing that up is crazy. Yeah. yeah. So stupid. So out of pocket. Like, yeah, obviously Embiid can't do that. It, yeah. Like, okay. If it rises to the point of physicality, then, then more than one person is doing something wrong. But man, like it, it is hard to fault him on like just a human level, like outside of the professionalism for, for being that frustrated. Like, I feel like most people would do the same in that in the, or at least want to in that situation yeah i kind of feel for him for once <laughs> i yeah. usually am like annoyed with him beat or against him or or you know wish he would stop 
turning into a tree that just got chopped down in the middle of an NBA floor uh, to draw a foul. But in this case, it's like, hey, man, yeah, take care of your business. You're hurt anyway. What's a three game suspension? And another uh, caveat with athletes assaulting people, kind of not really Jason Kelsey over the weekend at Penn state. Uh, <laughs> someone was Dude, saying yeah. words to him about his brother and Taylor Swift and, um, he had enough and he took the phone and he slammed it down, uh, got shoved and then yelled some words back at him. I found that very funny. Um, but also very valid because these we're in the generation now that people are able to say things behind a screen, behind a phone, behind a laptop, whatever yep. it may be without fear of consequences. Like, sure you get blocked or maybe you get banned like suspended from twitter for 30 days whatever it may be that's not r really a repercussion like it's just like it is yeah, what it is um that's right Kels now we're in the world of you can say things behind the screen and then now they're saying it to you in person like Joel Embiid he read, reads the story but that reporter is in the locker room or in the tunnel or in the press room like he sees him on a relatively daily basis like you yeah you can't just write that and then face the guy like <laughs> that yeah. that's preposterous so Embiid assaulting him <laughs> uh shoving him punching him it came out and it was like physical altercation shoving and then it turned into a punch so i i'm just waiting on the physical or the the video to come out if there is one yeah i would love there for there to be a video just to see his long gangly seven foot arms uh punching a small reporter like i, I just want to see your match looks because when you watch nba players fight it's they're they don't really That's know not how good. to fight they don't know how to yeah. fight um and they're it's also horrible just form. like deer like they just have long limbs and they don't have control of them sometimes like even though they're the most controlled <laughs> yeah. sport like it's a strange <laughs> conundrum that they can't just throw a punch like they have no coordination yeah. when it comes to that Everything's from the elbow. You yeah, know. but when it comes from a seven footer to a what, uh, probably a five foot eight guy, five foot ten um, guy, like yeah, a max, mere mortal. <laughs> like reporters, having been in the press box at the Dallas Stars, uh, reporters aren't tall. Uh, news breaking, <laughs> like reporters <laughs> yeah. are, are guys that didn't make it in sports that want to talk about sports because <laughs> yeah, they love right. it, and that's what it is. And we talked about this pre-show, like we were both athletes in high school. I swam in college. Like I had a limit. On my physical, ability. yeah. That's why I talk sure. about sports now. I I got to the point <laughs> right, where yeah. I could get, and then I was done. So Joel Embiid, a professional athlete, that's also a giant person uh, assaulting a, a smaller man, is very funny, and I just need to see the video. That's all it is. I just need to see it. I I am like I just can't imagine being that dude, and the, yeah, this seven foot monster is just coming at you, and I'm sure he sets up. You know, Joel Embiid's voice he's kind of it's like he's got this big kind of booming voice yep. but also kind of turns like kermit the froggy every now and then yeah whatever he's probably yelling something you know he's coming at you you're just like all right yeah. this is it what do you do this is yeah this is the end of my life his fist is probably bigger than his head like i don't i don't <laughs> it's, it's preposterous oh so yeah I, for I sure just, i just want to see it uh so yeah that that's <laughs> what a way to start the show talking about all the salts and uh just a strange fight it's like david and goliath uh, except for yeah goliath won that one probably so uh, um <laughs> yeah in this, in this case yeah <laughs> but before we go any further let's give a shout out to our sponsors big city wings houston's wing joint Apo apollo's wing joint go check them out today if you're in the houston area they got great people great beer and great wings over at big city wings they've got they just opened a new location i think they're up to 14 locations now in the houston area so just look up big city wings there's going to be one near you if you're in houston um and shout out to celebrity mint Go check out CelebrityMint.com and see their new uh, graded collectibles of all kinds of people. They got Jamal Shedd, Houston Legend, Pete Rose, rest in peace, uh, Mike Tyson. He's he's going to fight uh, one of the Paul brothers, Jake Paul, I guess, again, or tried to do that this time. I don't know. Whatever. But shout out to our sponsors. And uh, shout out to the election because Donald Trump had the president. Uh, he was the president a while ago. And then... Uh, lost the election, and then just won an election before Joel Embiid reached the Eastern Conference Finals. There we go. Tough look. Uh, very funny, though. Yeah. Uh, the jokes just keep coming. I, don't, I can't help oh, it. Yeah. Can't help yeah, it. Yeah, you know. I've probably been sent three or four variations of that that same joke, and it's evergreen. It works every time. It will uh, continue to work. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we didn't plan on talking about this, but talking about people, you know, saying something from a safe distance – 
and not having to really face the repercussions. Did you see the Drake DeMar DeRozan thing? Oh, yeah, we should talk about that. Uh, <laughs> so DeMar DeRozan, if you're unfamiliar, was traded from the Raptors for Kawhi Leonard uh, years ago when they won a title. Yeah, not because not his it. fault. No, like not, it's not, not his DeMar's choice fault. to be traded for a superstar. Um, DeMar yeah. DeRozan, fine player. Incredible player. He, he scored, what, 25,000 points? Like, he's scored a fuckload yeah. of points. He's going to be top 30 or so in scoring by the time he retires. Like, great player. Kawhi Leonard was an uh, all-time two-way player that for that year. Yeah. Like, one of the best yeah. years of all time that anyone yeah. could have. <laughs> like, not his fault that he got traded. Um, now he's in Sacramento as a free agent. He, he signed there, traded there. He signed there. Um they they go back to Toronto. Drake's sitting courtside as per usual. Drake's having a rough year. Um, I don't know why you keep trying to put yourself in the limelight if you're Drake right now, but <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, talking a lot of shit to DeMar, um, and all I could think about was that uh, SNL skit with Will Ferrell or whatever skit that was for them in the in the <laughs> in the gymnasium, and he's like De- DeMar. Kind of kind of name is DeMar. Like I don't I don't know. The more I, I say it, the more about. I hate it. Like it, it's oh. <laughs> like that's what he was doing like that's years ago was when he was still on the Raptors. And it's an interesting dynamic for him to be what it, he's basically the minister of culture and for the Raptors, like Matthew McConaughey yeah. is for Texas. Like I, I don't yeah. know. Um I don't know really what he does, but talking about and it was Vince Carter getting the banner up there and then he's just all the banner talk and then he called yeah. him a pussy at one point, like under his breath after the game was over. And I was like, dude, if you're going to be like, about it, just fucking say it. Just do it. Dude, say like, it with your chest. Like so, so under his breath. Say it with your chest, like, dude. Like what? Hey, yeah. With the ear you're having, you might as well say it with your chest. Like, what are we doing here? It's yeah. just ridiculously petty for no reason at all. When Tamar yeah. wanted to stay in Toronto, like he wanted to be a Raptor for life. He said it like he's been about that life. He wanted to be in Toronto and he got traded. He can't yeah. help that. Well, you know, it's this is connected to the Kendrick and Drake beef, right? Mm. I forgot because to Compton, so yeah, that makes sense. That's right. Demar, famously Compton, Compton guy. I'll never forget his first slam dunk contest. The dude that came it's out sick. with him, also famously from Compton. I don't remember who he was, but his yeah. suit was like snake skin. Yeah, it was like a whole thing. It was a whole great show. dunk contest too. Yeah, fam- Yeah, so he's famously from Compton. Was in the Not Like Us music video. Yeah. Once they made it, gets a shout out in the song. And so it's just like, he is the NBA face. Uh, and so Drake's got all this, you know, he, he thinks he played for the team and it's cute. You know, we, we like the Jack Nicholson, or at least I do. I think it's fun. Like when these yeah. celebrities like love their teams, they're always the, at the, the game. Ben whatever. Stiller of the Knicks. Like, yeah. Spike Lee. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and Drake, you know, he's just doing too much <laughs> a lot As of the time usual. in this case. Not shocking. And yeah, it, and you know he's one of the most prolific rappers of our generation. Some for some people he's like a, an all time great. Yeah. But dude, just doing too much in the NBA. Ah, brother. doing too much. And then yeah. the, the Vince Carter uh, jersey retirement. We'll touch on this. Um, the meme that came out of that. The also all time banner. All time banner. I don't, I don't know if I've actually seen it. I'm about to look it up. No, you got to look at this. It's it's uh, it's awesome. It's really long. It's not like a normal kind of rectangle. It's mu- much more long. And um, it's got his number on it, the the vintage Raptors jersey number with the oh, background. And dang. it's got him on it as well. Like, they did a hell of a job with the banner. Banners need to start yeah. doing this because this is way cooler than just having the the number and the last name on it. Like, Yeah, that's tight. It's a, it's a great banner. It's a little long for yeah. my liking, but. Sure, but the the idea of it is cool. I'm imagining like Toyota Center just having an like Hakeem with the trophy, embarrassing like the David two Robinson finals just trophies. on a banner. Either that, or you have the two finals trophies up there. Like he's posing yeah, up probably better. Trophies. But yeah, Larry O'Brien, like yeah, that'd be sick. Like let's just start doing yeah. that. Dirk with the the finals trophy, holding it up yeah. for the first time. Like that that'd be cool. I don't know. Great great banner. Uh, shout out to Vince Carter, even though he quit on that team and he got a. Jersey retirement that doesn't make sense to me. He quit. That on That is kind of weird. Like legit. Yeah. Like worse than James Harden quit on the Rockets. Like oh yeah, way worse. Like yeah. J- James Harden at least like he did his time. You know. Yeah. He he did a lot, and everyone kind of the writing was on the wall. He was just kind of a baby about the way he forced his way out. 
but yeah, Vin, Vince quitting. I was listening to uh, what's Esper Haney, the guy at the Athletic, who's like a Raptors guy, talk about it. And apparently, there's been a lot of they've done a lot of repairing their relationship, and so that's that's great. But it still still feels kind of weird. But you know, and he good didn't for really them. Do and, anything for them either? Like they weren't great. I don't know. Yeah, it's just a weird just, jersey retirement. But whatever, yeah. good for him. Yeah, you know, it's a cool banner. <laughs> yeah, it's a great banner. Um, yeah. We'll move on. The best team in the NBA right now, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Everyone saw this coming. They're 9-0 and to start the season, unbelievably. Yeah. Um, I think they're top four in both offense and defensive rating, which means, like, you're a finals contender, like, in most yeah. years. I know it's we're, we're not even 10 games into the season. I get it. We're not even an eighth into the season. But to have those numbers and to start 9-0, and we saw this last year, though, and that's where I'm going to start. Last year, they went on an 18-game win streak. Hmm. In January, they played nobody. They played a couple of teams, but yeah. not a ton. Um, they can do this. I, I, they have the talent. They have the the rebounding, the defensive skills, the the scoring on pretty much everyone on the floor can score at any moment in time for the Cavs. Like they're a good team. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. a little fraudulent. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. Nine and us. That's a it's a great start to the season, and you need wins to get higher seeds and all that, but. Yeah, I, I'm conflicted. Um, um, I'm not crazy. Kenny Atkinson is their coach, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I was just, I just had so much self doubt there. So yeah. I, there, I like Kenny the, Atkinson. There's the caveat. So this was the nugget I was going to tell you about. Kenny Atkinson, okay. first time, uh, first year head coach for a new team. This has only happened two other times in NBA history where a team has started seven or no or better. Okay. The only two times that happened. I don't remember the teams, but it happened in 2006 and 2011. Do you remember who the first yeah. matchups were? I I have heard I heard someone else bring this up, and it's quite the deep cut. It uh, is. Yes, the Dallas Mavericks and the Miami Heat. Now, one of those teams, I have no idea how they make it to the finals. Obviously, the Mavericks road's pretty tough, but they, at least they're yeah. they went there last year. Like, yeah, it's it, the logical leap is very short. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how they do it. Uh, Giannis to Miami, uh, that's that's how they do it. Uh, we'll talk about that yeah. in it. But yeah, that's that was my caveat. It's like the first time head coach to go seven and zero to start the season has only happened twice in NBA history, and both times the Miami Heat and the Dallas Mavericks were in the finals. So just a little yeah. nugget. But that that is quite the nugget. But not to like you know, to be fair to the Cavs, they have some nice players. Yeah, and uh, if. You know, last year, the Donovan Mitchell thing, obviously he is an incredible offensive player. There are still aspects of their game that felt like a little disjointed, I guess, like of how he integrated into the rest of the team. They seem way better. Darius Garland is probably about to have a career year. He looks incredible. Mo- Mobley, you know, he looks as advertised, just growing into a, I don't know. I mean, the fact that they were comparing him to Tim Duncan just feels like they're setting him up for failure. But I think he's more of a Chris he looks Bosch really good. But uh, without the shooting stroke, but I guess you know that was a late career thing for yeah, he can figure that for out. Bosch too. So yeah, yeah, but but still, he looks he's a defensive force. He looks in, he looks really good. Their whole team looks really good, and I really like Kenny Atkinson. He was one of the guys I wanted the Rockets to hire. Uh, like he was on my. They didn't call me and ask, but he was on no. my short list. Maybe next time. Um, I still think it's stupid that Brooklyn moved on from him when they did those years ago. Yeah, I get there's a lot going into that, but he he's got a history. I mean that that Brooklyn team really had no business taking that Sixers team to six games, and they did it pretty much all just on physicality and toughness. And that's like this Cavs team looks physical and tough this year. And that's kind of how they've got bullied out of the playoffs the past couple of years is by not being physical enough. And so, like you said, it's a long season. We're at the very beginning of it. Physicality is a, is a very exhausting thing to carry over a long season. And so we'll see if it holds up. They're also shooting the lights out right now. They're like second three point percentage, but they're not shooting a ton of threes relative to the rest of the league. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But uh, man, I want to think they're frauds because they have been, but I'm like, they maybe they're like a conference finals team. Yeah, and by frauds, I mean that I don't think they're going to make the finals. Um, 
which isn't yeah. really fraudulent. Like in all, <laughs> like Boston, yeah. if they don't make the finals, it's because everyone on their team got hurt. Like, yeah, or they just yeah. ran into a buzzsaw. Like they just ran into a team that was hotter than everyone else and just couldn't miss from three and played incredible defense. Like a lot of factors have to go into that. But and maybe Cleveland does that. Maybe the Knicks do that. But the Knicks don't look good yet. They got a lot of chemistry issues right now and. The Magic just lost Paolo for how many of her weeks with an oblique injury. And oh, dude. the East yeah. is like wide open outside of the top seed, which should be Boston. Yeah. But if Cleveland just wins 82 games, then they will be the number one seed. I don't, I don't know. They might. <laughs> That's right. Again. Yeah. It's possible. I saw uh, a Rockets guy was like, hey, I don't want to speak too soon. The Rockets are on pace for 51 games. And someone like quote tweeted it and was like, who cares? The Cavs are on pace for 82 or something like that. I was like, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Cleveland's off to an incredible start to the season. I don't know. I haven't seen that. I don't know if I've ever seen that. A 9 know start to the season. I really don't. But great start to the season. Uh, on the downside, we'll go to San Antonio. Uh, Coach Pop, mm-hmm. Greg Popovich, having some health issues right now, uh, stepping away from the team to go deal with that. The, they haven't said what it is. They haven't given a timetable. We just don't know. So it's just kind of prayers up for Coach Pop and hope he gets back on the court and gets to do what he loves. And yeah, I don't know. It's just everyone said it's been five years too long. Like he's just been sitting there and like, but he's doing what he loves to do. He's working. He's an older guy. Like usually when people stop working, like a strange uh, connection here, but Joe Paterno, like old as shit. Uh, all the stuff goes down at Penn State. He retires, and then he dies like within months. Like, yeah, when you stop working. You, your body stops working for the most part. Yeah, is what I've learned. So, um, yeah, just hope Coach Pop gets uh, healthy and gets to come back on the sideline. Yeah, you know, like we were saying at the top, like it's super easy to root against the Spurs for us, and you know, probably for a lot of other fan bases. But you don't root against Pop like that feels. Like you just don't do that, especially, you know, obviously in a case like this, but it's like want him to pull through from a basketball point of view, but much more than that. Like he, he's a great guy aside from being a great coach and want what's want him to, to be able to push through and, and be okay. Cause that just really sucks. Yeah. Um, at my old job back in 2016, worked for a defense contracting company and we had a four-star general who was a a VP of some sorts on the contract that I was on. And he was actually like really good friends with pop and Mm -hmm. just got to hang out with him in San Antonio. And he loves pop and they drink wine together and all that kind of like, just goes to the games whenever he wants. Like whenever he's in San Antonio, he just goes to a game, goes to his house, have, have some bottles of wine and everything. So hope pop can get healthy, go to some games and coach and then come home and have a nice bottle of wine with his buddies. So yeah. Prayers up for Coach Pop. Hope he gets back soon. Yeah. Um, last thing before we go, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, are are they dead? Is it time? Can we call a time of death? I don't know. Um, thinking about it, I'm really thinking about it. It's November 7th, and I'm thinking about calling a time of death. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm no doctor, but uh, it's it's looking bad, dude. They It's just going to keep going back to the Adrian Griffin thing, like – Man, dude, were they reactionary? Doc Very Rivers is just like a team killer. He won one finals, and now he just has license to just absolutely murder teams with superstars. I guess. I can't see him getting traded in the middle of this season. I think no. that's what most people think. Like, that would be too reactionary. And he even said in his little, like, subtle, <laughs> his version of a <laughs> public if we trade don't request. Figure this out, trade me essentially yeah yeah he said like if we don't make it to the finals or win a championship or something like that then or make the, i don't remember but he was like yeah i'm probably getting traded but they're you know second apron team he's like 40 something million on the books i think like 48 maybe and so they have to like match salary exactly i don't know if that changes once you get to the off season but i know they i'm not a I'm not a capologist i try but it's too hard um and then like every mock trade i've seen is some teams five players to match the salary and then like six first round picks. And I'm just like, ah, that's just <laughs> such a, that's so much. That's a lot. And it's Giannis, but like, it's so much to give up. 
Because then he's going know. to a situation where you've just lost five players. So then you have to sign right. four players and uh, hope yeah. that it works. Like he's kind of just going from one situation that's not great to another situation that's potentially not great, just in a different scene. Yeah, I'm. I'm a thing about me. I'm kind of philosophically against the whole gutting your roster for one good player, and. I understand like it has to be a case by case thing. And we're talking about Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like he will be considered one of the best front court players of all time. Uh, If not just, you know, just outright one of the best players of all time by the end of his career. And so, yeah, like if you can make the trade for Giannis, you do it. Yeah. But it's just hard. Like there's so many points to replace if you're actually like trading away four to five players that actually contribute. And it's not just salary matching guys. I don't know. That's tough. But someone's going to do it if if he's available. Yeah. And with the Bucks, they were 30 and 13 with Adrian Griffin as head coach last season. They fired him, hired Doc Rivers, and I believe they're nine games under 500 now. 20 and 29, I believe, is their record since he took over. Um, Doc Rivers has not been a good head coach since 2008 for the mo- or 2010, call it. Like, it's been a long yeah. time since he's been a very good head coach. Like, obviously, the Clippers were, they were good, but the the whole late game breakdowns like that's coaching um yeah I, if you have oh, dumb yeah. players you have dumb players but if you don't have the right system in place to execute in the last call it four minutes of a game you're not going to win a lot of games and the clippers did that consistently in the playoffs um and now the bucks just they don't play defense uh, their guards cannot play defense damian lillard has never played defense in his life yeah. um so it's basically like oh sorry he went by me brooke Hey, hey, Brooke Lopez, you got it? No, he can't. He's too. He's old now. He he's not like the <laughs> yeah. really good defensive center anymore. Like he's still good at defense, but he's not like in, he's not in the top echelon of it anymore. Like, and Giannis can't yeah. guard everyone on the court. Like it's just there's no one playing defense outside of Giannis and Brooke Lopez, and it's not working obviously. And then they don't score enough points. Like it's. <laughs> Damian yeah. Miller was there to score a lot of points, and you know what would look really good with this uh, Bucks team right now? Drew Holiday. Yeah, uh, yeah he might be right. really good on this team. <laughs> yeah, Drew Holiday. Uh, they also have some young players that they just don't play. Yeah, so that's kind of weird too. And they don't have picks. Um, they don't have second round picks. They don't have first round picks. They traded five first or second round picks for Jay Crowder at the deadline the other year. Like. You just don't have any capital at all. And then you're in the luxury tax. Like you have no ability to just make this team better this season. You just don't have that ability. So you're just stuck with this roster. You're stuck with your head coach because you probably gave him far too much guaranteed money that, and you're already paying Adrian Griffin, whatever his guaranteed money was. Like you have two coaches on the books. You're not going to fire doc rivers again, or you're not going to fire your head coach again and put in a third head coach on your books for how many every seasons. And you're in cap hell, no picks. It's one of the bleaker outlooks in the NBA right now. And you have one of the best players in the NBA, like a top four yeah. player in the NBA. Max is oh, top yeah. four. <laughs> like he's probably top three. <laughs> like he's incredible yeah. and he can't win basketball games because the rest of the team sucks. And Chris yeah, Middleton's dude. knees are gone. They've eviscerated. Yeah. They're gone. Yeah. And him, and him legend, Chris Middleton is <laughs> he's toast, man. He's dust. Poor guy. But yeah. Yeah, they are 22nd in offensive rating, so not good. No, that's not, um, good. not yeah. In case you, in case you were unaware, not good. Thirty. They are for reference. That's right. They <laughs> are 21st in defensive rating, so they are a lottery team by rating. Yeah, and they don't have their pick this year, so it doesn't matter. 24th, 24th in net rating, negative 6.3. I did not think I would be saying that about. A Giannis Antetokounmpo team. No, I don't think anyone yeah. would. Um, so let's move away from that. What if if we get to the end of the season, they miss the playoffs or they early first round exit, like sweep, like they were swept by the Heat the other year. Like, where does Giannis go? Oh. It, we're this is all theoretical. We're not trying to pro- like propose trades because we think they're going to happen. Just yeah. Realistically, if that's what were to happen, they miss the playoffs or they early first round exit and they decide to trade Giannis, where in the world do you trade Giannis? Because there aren't many teams that can just absorb that into their cap, one, or two, have enough players or good enough players to trade 
for Giannis with minimal picks. So you're looking at like the Nets, the, the yeah. Pistons, like all of these teams that aren't good that just have bukus of picks and salary that they can just take in like, because they don't have any salary on their teams anyway, really, for the most part. So it's like it's kind of bleak out there. You got any trades for us? Um, well, I was just looking, uh, I was looking at the heat because I feel like that's the most obvious team to be aggressive to try yep. and go get him of like your, your top teams and him and Jimmy are making the same amount of money. I can't figure out why this trade machine won't let it go through, but how funny would it be if the heat are just like, all right, Jimmy, we kind of love you, but we're tired of you and you're old. Uh, we're just going to swap you straight up <laughs> for Giannis and some picks, whatever picks. They uh, have. Yeah. Y- yeah. Which is, let's see, they've got. Uh, their really first rounder next year. year. Yeah. First rounder. Ne- exactly. Yeah. First rounder next year. And then 28, 29 there. So really after, okay. after 27, they've got everything that, you know, you could pull up on a trade machine. So, okay. but yeah, that's, that's a potential. Of course, everyone is throwing the Houston Rockets in there because we've just got too many guys. They say, which, you know, might be true. We just sent uh Cam Whitmore down to the G league. Um, so yeah, so trying to keep him fresh, I guess, so that dangle that trade bait, but if they're going to trade for Giannis, then they have to group at least one. They have to pick up Fred Van Vliet's team option and include him in the trade, which I don't think they're going to do. They like the stability he brings, or they have to do Brooks, which I think is more likely, but he would still have two years and they've touted him as like this culture guy. So that might really be weird for the locker room. Obviously, it's worth it if you <laughs> are trading Dylan Brooks for Giannis Antetokounmpo. But but then it starts to get tricky because as a sentimental Rockets fan, I start looking at these names and I'm like, I don't want. The only name I'd want to give up is Jabari. Yeah, but, you throw Jabari and Brooks and then like three picks. Yeah, so, well, that doesn't get you up to the salary. That's the crazy thing. Oh, Giannis so is on the books for there. So 48.7. So, but here's the thing too, I think, and again, I can really only speak to this links on the Rockets because they're the team I watch the most, whatever. I think the more, you know, if we get to the end of the season and things keep going how they are, every team the Rockets try to trade with is going to say, we want one of Tari Eason or Amon Thompson, and we won't take no for an answer. And if you're the Rockets... You throw Shane ah, in see, there? Like, if I'm getting Giannis, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's but it kind of hurts to say. Yeah. It stings, but I think so. I think you throw Shingun in there, picks, and then whatever salary to and like maybe one other player. So I think you can make it work. You can get really close with Jock Landau, Shingun, Brooks, and then Jabari. Yeah. And then you might have to throw in like one more minimum guy just to get it like precise. Cause they're second apron. They have to take back like exactly you have what Jeff they Green have. Again. We have Jeff green again, so there they can go. throw in someone like that. Um, He'd look great. In then, form. Uh, hey man, I love me. <laughs> I love me some uncle Jeff. I, yeah. I don't know if he's ever played for the bucks, but that's good for anyone still playing immaculate grid too. Yeah. It'd be great. Um, and, and the, the rockets also have Phoenix's future picks. Mm-hmm. Which will be good trade once, in the off season, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that'll be good once uh, KD retires too. That's fair. Um, and yeah, well, that depends. That all depends on a lot. But so the Rockets could be real. The Nets. I just struggle to think that the next the Nets would. That well, I don't know why he would want to go to the. No, Nets. he wouldn't. He wouldn't approve that one. I, I have one yeah. other team. Okay, let's hear it. Golden State. Yeah. So. Yeah. They kill off Draymond, um, whatever picks they have, and whatever other salary they get, and then you get Curry and Giannis for two, three years. Oh my gosh, that'd be insane. That'd be frightening. Um, I don't know what else you put around it. Like you got to throw probably like Kaminga in the trade and give him a contract. Like, oh, oh sign no, a trade kind of thing. Like, yeah, because you know, he'll be a contract right now. But it, they would do a sign and trade with him. It'd be easy, but. He'd be their like young player, and then you you get rid of the the toxicity of Draymond Green um, and his podcast. You get rid of that, send him up to Milwaukee. Right. Um, it's closer to Michigan, so he's like kind of back at home. It's like the same thing. They're the same state. It's they're just I don't like either. Yeah. Of them. It's cold up there. Sure. He'll be fine. Um, 
it would piss it would piss Draymond off a lot. But Clay's already gone, so like the core is only two guys now, really. So you could you could do that for Giannis. You would do that for Giannis. Oh yeah, I would trade Draymond Green for Giannis. <laughs> like yeah, even so that the salary, yeah, the salary gets tricky. Um, well, the thing is, like Steph retires eventually, and then you've got Giannis, and everyone, who's going to say no to come in in free agency and playing right. with Giannis? So they're paying Andrew Wiggins twenty six this year. Wiggins, there it is, because he's on that uh, that extension they signed that looked terrible last year. It looks pretty good this year. Let's see. Yeah, and it goes up. It only goes up after this year. So that might that might help, but I imagine you want to keep some wing defenders and not make Giannis defend everyone. Yeah. But, but if you get Giannis and you know, you figure that out afterwards, <laughs> you just see what happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can get some more wings and they've got a lot of picks too. They would man. lose all their picks trying right. to trade for them, but you would, man, I love yeah. just talking theoretical superstar trades two weeks into the season. This is the best. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to have this until maybe February. Or January yeah. or something like that. Someone was going to be upset, but Giannis made that very clear pretty much like two games into the season. So, yeah, um, right. yeah it's trade talk, November 7th. Gotta love it. <laughs> That's NBA. Uh, shout That's out to right. our sponsors, Big City Wings, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint. Go check them out today if you're in the Houston area and go check out Celebrity Mint at celebritymint.com and see their graded collectibles of, I don't know, everybody uh, Jamal Shedd, Pete Rose, Mike Tyson, and more. Over at celebritymint.com. Use code Apollo H O U at checkout. Sheldon, thanks for joining me. We'll be back soon. Um, be back next week at some point. I think Josh Garcia will be back um, from his counting votes over at the election polls. Uh, and that's his job. God bless so, him. Yeah, I don't know. He's not counting votes. I, I don't think. If he is, we, we need to. We need to check on the the whole process of hiring people to that actually count the votes. But. Yeah, I sent him some extras to put in for me, but I don't, I don't know if it worked. Yeah, there was a meme going around. It was uh, Luka Doncic was leading Texas at like ninety two percent, and I was like, Josh, did you count oh, my yeah. vote like five million times? How did that, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, I saw those, and I was like, okay, the people making these are unaware that there are three teams who hate each other in this state. But yeah, no, it, it worked out for me though. Um, so Josh counted my vote about five million times over in the DFW area, but you know. He'll be back. Sheldon, he'll be back. Yeah. Um, this has been Zero Gravity, Paul Media's NBA podcast. We'll be back soon. Uh, shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to you, Sheldon. And shout out to you for watching this episode or listening to it. It'll be up on Apple and Spotify. I'm going to do it. I promise. Right on. <laughs> we'll be looking for it. Peace out, man. It was fun. Right. See you all next week.